Uh, simple plan today, I'm going to drift up the ooze. Uh, up here, along here. Just see how far I get with the tide, and then if it stays benign, then I'm going to drop an anchor somewhere. These bridges. Uh, air draft of five foot, so I will fit under everything without talking to anybody. He said I should talk to Ghoul as I come up. Really? I don't think they want to talk to me. Because I've been up to Ghoul lots of times, so. But. It'll be a while before the tide comes in. There are lots of rivers in the UK called the Ouse, primarily because the name means water, so I think we might be into a bit of a kangaroo situation here. It's a pretty long river, so by the time I get to York I'll be 50 miles inland. That's way too many hours of Tahatsu clatter, so it's on with the headphones. The currents run at up to five knots, which is a good thing. It'll get me there quicker, but when the tide turns against me, then I'll have to quit for the night. The lower stretches where the tide runs strong are fairly well industrialised, but I rather enjoy watching the wharves and buildings roll past. The Yorkshire Ouse is notorious for mud banks that move and lots of floating trees and plastic bags, which are no problem at all for KTL. She has and will deal with much worse. The windmills, I know lots of people are against windmills, but uh, they're better than the power station, although, man, they change the atmosphere of a place. This place just feels completely different because of the windmills. Um, but you can see the power station and what it's chucking out. I mean, the power station has its own cloud. But the windmills are pretty freaky, I have to say. Uh, they dwarf everything around them. T having seen windmills on the land and on the sea. I prefer them on the sea. Bridges are great, each one a unique engineering sculpture in its own right. As you move upstream they get smaller and slightly more ramshackle. And you can see that some of them have been clonked fairly hard a few times. underneath me running at at least two or three knots I've been making excellent progress 
travelling at up to seven knots occasionally. Even with the engine on tick over, I'm still doing five, but as with all good things, they must eventually end and the flood fades. Then I notice that the ebb has started and the water is running against me. This far up, it's only about two knots, but the Tahatsu has to work really hard to get us to move along at three knots against the outgoing stream. But the light's good and the music in my headphones is great and as the light fades, I start looking for a place to tie up for the night. And it is bloody marvellous when the noise finally quits and you can hear the peace all around you. It's eight o'clock, maybe half past eight, and I'm a mile downstream of Nayburn, so it was um, 37 miles uh, moving. I was traveling for eight hours, eight hours 51. Stopped for one hour 13, so it has been quite a long day. And I've tied up to this. It's tied to a tree. I assume this far up it's just gonna carry on running down fast over there much slack over here. Um, I've got the plate down so that if while I'm asleep the boat does break free. It's attached to the anchor and it's attached at the bow. Hopefully if the tree goes it'll make a big snap but the anchor will still be holding me. Not a bad day. There's a bit of frost on there. Good. Hello, uh, my name's Winter. I've got a 23 footer. I'm on the tidal bit of the ooze and I'd quite like to come through to the lock today if I may. I've got a temporary licence and the insurance with me. So um, I'm, I'll motor up. I'm about two kilometres away. I'll motor up and see if there's anybody about. If not, I'll just um, enjoy this bit of the river until I can come through the lock. Thank you. Bye. I love to watch the way the character of a river changes so suddenly when you move from the tidal to the freshwater side of the lock. It goes from being wild to tamed in the blink of a lock gate. You realise that thousands live along its banks, many hundreds of them actually living on the river itself, and it all seems terribly busy. Go. Oh, I don't know. Let's go along this bit first. Yeah, let's go this way.
York is a fantastic city and not to be missed. It was settled as a trading hub long before the Romans came. The locals were called Brigantes, prickly proud and rebellious bunch they were, completely unlike the Yorkshiremen of today of course. When the Romans first invaded Britain they had a pretty easy ride. The southern tribes full of softies fell like dominoes before their legions, but then they got to Yorkshire and they had one heck of a job suppressing the locals. They ended up with a garrison of 6,000 men here and the Brigantes still gave them a run for their money. The locals never really quit on kicking the Romans whenever they got the chance, so the garrison needed manning all the time. When the Roman Empire ran out of steam, eaten away by a corrupt and self-indulgent core, which is the way all empires die, the Vikings came. The locals fought valiantly to force them back down the river, but they were here to stay. The river was such a good one because they could ride the tides all the way to York. Then for hundreds of years it was a pretty peaceful place to live and trade. Eventually the Normans came and the rebellious locals put up a pretty stiff fight again. Must be something in the soil. The Normans had to throw massive amounts of money at keeping control of York and the surrounding countryside. Eventually they let the church take the lead. And within a few decades York joined in with the money-grabbing anti-semitic pogroms that were sweeping England at the time. In 1190, 150 Jews were burned alive in York, but everyone in Britain was doing it at the time, so York is no worse than any of the other cathedral towns. Of course it was the Catholics who did all the Jew burning. Then the Protestants took over, and they were no better. This is the plaque to St Margaret, crushed to death under her own door for being a Catholic. They placed her on the ground with a big rock under her back, put her front door over her and piled weights on it until she died. It took 15 minutes, but they left the body there for the rest of the day as a lesson to other Catholics. And the punishment, lest we forget, was carried out by God-fearing Church of England members. This was the Methodist Hall. Both Wesleys preached here, but the place was torched. Chapel people were not popular with the Church of England. Guy Fawkes came from York. He was baptised into the Church of England, but it was here he became a Catholic and then in 1605 he tried to blow the British establishment to smithereens. He was executed by being hung, drawn and quartered, yet another lingering painful death at the hands of the establishment. On the bright side, the Minster here is a real cracker, the biggest Gothic cathedral in Europe, allegedly. They charge £10 for going in, which is too pricey for me, so I sneaked some shots at the turnstile and cycled round the outside admiring the buttresses. And looking at the outside of the Minster is currently free. The place is under almost constant repair, and yes, I've never really understood gargoyles. They just seem so profane. The labyrinth of streets around the Minster is wondrous. It goes on for miles with literally thousands of places to eat and drink. In the summer though, York is crawling with tourists. It's choking on its own popularity. So my advice, such as it's worth, if you want to enjoy the place, is to go back in the late autumn when most of the tourists have gone elsewhere. Nevertheless, York, well worth a visit.
Sailing against the current. Up those. At a pretty reasonable speed, too. Good old topper sail. This really is a very easily driven hull, I have to say. Must get that piece of string in, though. There's a road bridge up here, but I think I can probably sail underneath it. Wow, sailing is so much better <laughs> than motoring. Unbelievable. How, how can motorboat people just put up with it? This is absolutely glorious. I was going to stay at that wharf last night, but uh, a bit close to the road bridge. It was very noisy last night, there's hardly any traffic on it now. Wants to jibe. to be out before the mobos. It's very nice. <laughs> I hope you're not too calm. I've got an engine, sadly. You have to play the currents and look for places where there's a bit of slack water. I've been beaten by it now. main The river was so busy between uh, Neyburn Lock and York, just 
stack stuff and I haven't seen anything this morning apart from some of the rowers, one of whom swore at me for getting in his way. I seem to think that the sail should give way to rowers. An extraordinary idea. Told me I was on the wrong side of the river. I did get out of their way. Uh, you know, he's a young man, full of testosterone. I'm an old bloke, not full of testosterone. Very pleasant, very pleasant indeed. The weather's starting to break up a bit. I've got to get back through the lock at half past six. I told the bloke I'd be back at half past six, so at some stage I will have to turn round. Don't quite know how far to go up here. But while the wind is doing this, it seems a shame to quit. Just coming up to Benningborough, so I think that's probably as far as I'm going to go. When I come back with Jill, we might go further, don't know. It has been amazing this morning, I can't believe that we, I was able to sail against the current. I thought I might be able to run back with the current, but um, there's just been just enough wind to make progress against current. At one stage this morning, the mast fell out. The boom lifted the lift on the sail, so the rise just pulled out and flipped over the side. No harm done. No. In a way, it would be nicer if the wind had been behind me going back down, but we'll see. You know, you can leave the rig in, and if the wind behaves. It's a fantastic tide, there's a fantastic current running, so it should make pretty good progress. The river above York is wonderful, beautifully tranquil and rural. You can hear a clay pigeon shoot going on full blat over here though. Time to turn around. Just beginning to appreciate how strong the current I've been fighting is now. Amazed that I made any progress at all, really. here is <laughs> in avoiding getting blown into the trees because the trees are to lured so once I get treed uh, so you have to decide when you're losing it and then you have to fire up the engine
almost makes eight hours of engine throbbing worthwhile. Boy, it's nice to be going with the current. <laughs> Good thing is now that the, when the wind dies, the boat keeps going. Whereas before, when the wind died, it just stopped because the current was against me. tree trunks come from that come swooping down the Humber. Beautiful river, absolutely beautiful. Don't bother then duck. footed now. Got fed up with the boom banging on the Now there's a bridge coming up and then a low wire so take the rig back and then just motor the rest of the way back after that. down the river. It's half past five in the morning. Um, it's supposed to be sunny this morning and then rain this evening so I should have quite a nice drift down the tide, down the channel here, down the ooze. Looks to me as though there's a nice mist on the river so I'm going to, as soon as the kettle's boiled I'm going to set off. It's been a nice trip, very good. Rough old night though. I'm in no rush so I might as well just enjoy the journey <coughs> rather than have the engine going. And the river looks beautiful and sounds fantastic. I'm having to do about two strokes of the paddle every five minutes just to keep myself in the middle of the flow. I'm not running that fast at the moment. I'm sure later on I will have to put the engine on just to keep control. Three meters underneath me. Starting to burn up 
already. Some trees heading my way. Paddle. Blackbirds are giving it. There you are. Um, two and a half meters underneath me, so seven foot should be more than enough for any boat. And the current's taking me along at about 1.6 knots. I'm not having to paddle much. People have criticised me for doing this. I've got the life jacket on underneath here. But this is really loose at the top. When you see the life jackets burst, they burst out of the top there and a bit here. And I can get it off in no time. If I had to put the life jacket on over the top of this jacket every time, it wouldn't be very good. There are some beautiful houses along this river. This place here is a cracker. Just imagine living there. It really looks like it should be haunted in the summer. Cold room buggery in the winter. Morning. Morning. Isn't it fabulous? Thank you. 
baiting, but still. At least this gives me the power to put the boat in the right bit of the river. It's not much wind at all. Just enough to keep the bow pointing in the right direction. It disappears every now and again. Top of sail. Two point one knots, perfectly respectable. Four meters. So anybody with any sort of keel could get up here, get a centaur up here, no problem. They have a very nice week on a centaur up here, you have to leave the mast down. I really like the way when the channel, when the tide turns, the current's running, you get all these little sparkles underneath the trees, beautiful. I'm in a bit of a dilemma because I don't know, um, I don't want to start pumping the tide when I get to the other end. I don't want to get down to the bottom after the tide has turned, otherwise I'm going to have to try and beat the tide up, up. As the tide comes up the Humber, I'm going to be going down it. But I don't want to stop sailing. <laughs> 